se quejaba de eso, de estar cansado, y yo pues le intentaba quitar un poco de... Y... fue tremendo, ¿no? O sea, que fue un incidente o que fue un mal golpe, es mentira. When star trainer Alexis Martinez was dragged underwater by Cato to kill a whale, he knew for certain he was living his last moments on Earth. Just minutes before, their training session hit off to a great start. It was just a routine session at Laura Park Zoo in the Canary Islands. Both man and beast knew each other well. They needed to make their Christmas Eve show special, but suddenly, the whale became the killer it was known to be. Alexis did not even get time to surface as a 6,600-pound orca rammed into him battering his vital organs and dragging him deeper into the tank. Not satisfied, the orca crushed his bones as trainers watched from above, waiting for Alexis to surface. This is the tragic tale of Alexis Martinez, a man who wanted nothing but to live his dream of working with killer whales. The tragic death of Alexis Martinez by Cato the killer whale was terrifying. It stunned the trainers and eyewitnesses trying to figure out what was happening. Both Martinez and Cato had always looked so good together, so what went wrong? The Christmas Eve show is always a crowd puller at SeaWorld, and who better at the showstopper than Alexis Martinez and his favorite orca, Cato? Everyone knew them as friends. They were considered the best and had performed several shows without incident. It was 2009, just three years into Alexis Martinez's career, and his routine with Cato was chosen for the Christmas Eve show an event always reserved for the most reliable performers. It was Alexis's big challenge and the ultimate test of his career. However, something in him picked at his brain. He wasn't quite ready for it. A few days earlier, he confided in his fiancée, Estonia, saying he was so tired. Alexis even revealed how the killer whales were growing disobedient, disruptive, and aggressive. It seemed that Alexis knew something bad was coming, but he didn't expect he would end up being the victim of his own gut feeling. Alexis Martinez grew up in Spain and had loved animals since he was a young boy. However, in 2004, he became ecstatic when he learned the zoo would receive four orcas from SeaWorld. These whales would soon become part of the new ocean world at Lower Parca and would be performing as well. Alexis applied for the orca training program and was accepted. As he learned the ropes, he grew accustomed to the whales and soon became a popular trainer with the animals. Little did he realize how his dream would soon come to a tragic end. Alexis gained a lot of experience at Laura Park as an orca trainer. His fiancée, Estonia Rodriguez, said he was completely committed to his job. Alexis worked tirelessly at the Orca Ocean Department so that his routines would be perfect with these beautiful beasts. He soon became a favorite with the crowds and Laura Parker soon became a popular destination for tourists in Tenerife. Alexis, now an accomplished trainer, was the leading performer in showcasing the mighty killer whales and the awesome tricks that they were trained to do. It was Alexis who took charge of the rehearsals for every show. The staff at the park liked Alexis. He was a cooperative and courteous young man. As Alexis grew closer to the orcas, he realized the unseen problems associated with the job. Alexis began observing how the killer whales weren't entirely happy while other staff denied that there was something wrong with the whales. He began to have safety concerns about them and noticed that they were becoming restless. The whales were not responding to commands like before especially Cato. Cato was a 6,600-pound orca born in 1995 in captivity in SeaWorld. All his life, he knew nothing except living in a claustrophobic tank and entertaining crowds across the USA. In 2006, Cato suddenly found himself being transported a huge distance across the ocean to Laura Park. Unlike other whales captured from the ocean, Cato did not show much aggression nor did he ever show signs of distress or rebellion. On December 24, 2009, Alexis found Cato in a good mood. That was a good sign. It would make Alexis's job easier. He entered the tank, swimming alongside Cato as he had always done before. He wanted the training session to go smoothly, making sure everything was right. He instructed other staff members around the enclosure to pick up any unwelcome gestures, but there were none. Rehearsing alongside with Alexis was fellow trainer Brian Rokich, who positioned himself on the stage. 
The move Alexis attempted to rehearse was common. It had been done in SeaWorld several times. It was an awesome sight. He would dive underwater with Kato. It would look like a majestic and dramatic sight, like Aquaman emerging from his marine kingdom. It was all going well until suddenly Kato acted strangely. He began disobeying commands and refusing the cues. And with no warning, he just stopped performing as he should have. He kept bobbing up and down in the water alongside Alexis. Alexis tried to stun again, but tumbled as Kato leaned to one side. Alexis wondered why Kato was misbehaving. He knew it was possible, regardless of years of training, an orca is still a wild beast. They too, like all wild animals, can become unpredictable. Alexis did not realize how Kato was about to transform from Kato the orca to Kato the killer. Brian then shouted a command to Kato, which he obeyed. The whale was promptly rewarded with a bucket of fish. That did give Alexis hope, and he tried again. He would ride Kato down into the tank and then pull up onto the stage. The whale dragged him deeper into the 14-meter enclosure as soon as he went under. It forced Alexis to abandon the dive. At that moment, even the best trainer would never have expected he was being toyed with as a prey. When Alexis emerged from the water and attempted to climb out of the pool, Kato blocked the way. That move must have sent a cold, chilling shiver down Alexis' spine. Alexis Martinez might have even guessed that he was about to die. Alexis waited for Kato to calm down and begin swimming towards the pool's edge. Yet again, Kato blocked his path. The giant killer whale leaned into the trainer, just as a killer whale in the wild leans into its victims, trapping them so they can't escape. By now, alarm bells had to have been ringing in Alexis' ear. Something was wrong and he had to escape the tank fast. His life depended on it. He requested a stage call via underwater tone, but something still needed to be done. Kato was not responding. He had ceased to become a whale in captivity. His sole intent was now to kill. The other trainers as well understood the gravity of the situation. Something had to be done. They tried using emergency signals, hoping the agitated whale would stop, but Kato didn't. He was enraged and angry, Years of frustration and anger were unleashed upon Alexis in one barbaric moment as he began headbutting Alexis to the bottom of the pool. No one could do anything. No one would dare get into the water at that moment. When a killer whale goes berserk, there is little a human can do. As Alexis sank deeper, Kato waited momentarily and rammed the trainer with his snout. That first deadly blow might have been as fatal as every organ in Alexis' body was torn apart. It is tragic. But perhaps if Alexis did die in that decisive moment, he was fortunate because the killer whale was not done. Not yet. Kato tore into Alexis again, crushing all his bones in the process. As if showing off his kill, Kato surfaced with the lifeless body of the young trainer balancing on the tip of his nose. He then dropped it and Alexis' body again drifted down to the bottom of the pool. Kato prevented trainers from entering the pool by stalling them at the gate. Alexis's training and skill could not save him from the onslaught of the ferocious beast playing around with his body at the bottom of the tank. What went wrong that ill-fated Christmas Eve at Laura Park? The bloody incident instigated fear in all the other trainers. None of them ever got into the tank with orcas again. Laura Park's Orca's entertainment was unofficially ended. The park authorities tried hushing up the sword affair by stating that it was a case of drowning, but the autopsy spoke a different story. Alexis's vital organs were like putty. His bones were crushed, and his body was compressed and fractured. There were several bite marks all over him. Former SeaWorld trainer Jeffrey Varchese felt the whale acted out of intense frustration of not being rewarded despite giving its best. Apparently, its trainers didn't think so and withheld its reward, which cost him his life. The tragedy, regarded as unprecedented, was soon overshadowed a few months later when trainer Darn Bacho was bruised and battered to death by the notorious rebel orca Tilikum. It seemed the death of Alexis did not initiate action then. Still, it soon became part of why the orca breeding and marine entertainment was stopped. Do you think using wild animals with killer instincts to entertain people is justified? Is there ever any second chance? We may never know, but make sure to check the next video that will reveal the untold horrors behind Darn Bacho's orca attack, shown on the screen.